The law of attraction. So what is it? Why is it so popular in all the self-help books and all the self-help psychology and even new age spirituality, um, even ancient religions as I'll get into, and just life transformation stuff in general? Why is this so popular? What is it? And where's the truth in it? And if there is truth, is there anything that's problematic? Is there anything that doesn't make sense that's a clear fallacy? Well, I'm going to go over that in this video. The law of attraction is this belief that whatever we inherently believe in our subconscious and unconscious mind is attracting our external reality, is manifesting the reality we see and the life that we live on the outside. So if you're blessed, if you have incredible things, you have great you know, wealth and even spiritual blessings and all these different things, or you have a great relationship, or you have a great house, all these different things, it's because you inherently, unconsciously believed that you're worthy of it, you're able to do it, um, you know, that you will manifest it. You, you held these beliefs that brought it about. And if you hold dark beliefs, like, you know, you're unworthy, you, you're constantly depressed, you're constantly thinking you can't do things, you, you hate other people, um, you're you know, just a horrible person to be around, you hate life, you naturally have a life that looks horrible, that looks depressed, that looks, you know, lifeless. Now, there's a lot of truth in this, obviously. There's a lot of truth in about what we think and how it, you know, plays for the life that we live. If you're constantly thinking horrible, dark, depressing things and you hate other people, you're not going to have friends and you're going to have a depressing, lonely life. But if you're so loving, if you're so, you know, a blessing to other people, you're generous, you're, you're a righteous person, you're going to live a quote-unquote better life. So there's a lot of truth in this idea. But there's a lot of lies and there's a lot of fallacy and there's a lot of actually problems that come with adopting the law of this idea. That this is a spiritual truth, this is a spiritual principle that is right 100% of the time. Now, many people in New Age spirituality and even in self-help believe this. They, they actually believe that this is a spiritual law of the universe, like the law of mathematics, like the law of physics, the law of attraction. People like Abraham Hicks, Joe Dispenza, all these New Age teachers, self-help teachers, they teach this to manifest wealth to manifest prosperity, to manifest relationships, to manifest all these things, you need to rewire your unconscious beliefs. And that anything you're experiencing outside that's horrible is because you had something on the inside that manifested it. Are you already thinking of the problems that this can, you know, involve? Let's say the 23-year-old who is walking home, this girl gets raped, tortured, is scarred, by an evil person motivated with evil intentions does this to another human being. Did that person manifest it? Did they have some unconscious belief that, you know, manifested this to happen in their lives? Well, the law of attraction would say yes. And the law of karma in, in Hinduism would actually say yes, but it was in a previous lifetime and they reincarnated it and they needed to experience that because they did something evil in the previous lifetime and need to make up for it in this lifetime. That's why the caste system is in India. That's why there's untouchables who you can't even associate with or even have a friend who is a friend of an untouchable. That's how unclean they are. Are these people who are poor, oppressed, abused, you know, the genocides throughout history, the, the victims of evil, did they all manifest this? Was this all in their unconscious mind and they needed to rewire their mind to rewire and change their life? Obviously not. Obviously, there's a fallacy to this spiritual truth, to these spiritual beliefs. This worldview, which is becoming adopted by a lot of people, the New Age is very closely associated with the self-help, with the life transformation stuff, with the wealth manifestation. The law of attraction is actually evil because when you think and you believe in the law of attraction, your empathy level goes way down way down. You see someone on the side of the street, man, I wish they knew how much power they have in their unconscious thoughts. Man, if only she knew that, you know, she was manifesting that rape or that guy was manifesting getting robbed and tortured and beaten. Man, if only they knew I got to teach them these spiritual truths. 
Got to teach them the reality of who they are and the divine, you know, power that they hold internally. Okay, there might be some truth in, you know, a homeless person who's lazy and hates life and, you know, needs some motivation, needs to understand, have a greater internal locus of control as as is talked about in psychology and not be so focused on the external locus of control where one believes that all of the things that happen to them in life are completely uncontrollable in our external circumstances. But the internal locus of control is that, you know, things that happen in life are largely happen because of what we decide to do, our own will, our own free will and how we exercise it. Obviously, we need to take responsibility for certain things and to better our lives, to better who we are as people. Um, to, to live a better life. But there are people who are victims of evil. There are people who are literal victims of evil. And there is an evil force. There is an evil kingdom. There is an evil entity, the devil, Satan, and all of the demons that serve him that, that entered this world and want to destroy all things that are good, all things that represent God, that represent true holiness, righteousness, love, things that are pure. There is a war on. And this belief, which is demonic when taken to the absolute, and when you call something a law, laws of physics, whatever, that's an absolute, a spiritual principle, that's an absolute. No, it's completely wrong, it's false, and it's 90% truth with the 10% lie, and that 10% lie can cause great damage, and that's what the devil does. These beliefs, these you know laws people hold, they might seem all fluffy-duffy, and I'll light and love, but when you actually think about it and are discerning about it and actually examine it for what it is and the implications of it, you start to find, whoa, that's some real serious problems disguised in there. The law of attraction is all about manifesting your life and living a better life, happiness and joy. But, you know, you see people in the new age who literally I've met people, many people in the new age who until this is brought about, they don't even realize they believe this. I say, okay, because they get into other things like soul contracts, reincarnation, past lives, karma. That's all Hinduism, by the way. This is all, you know, the Indian religion um, that, you know, produces a lot of suffering and a lot of evil to souls that are oppressed by evil things. The empathy is gone. And I've met people in the New Age who literally believe that six-year-old girl who's raped or, uh, you know, even past the age of adult, 19-year-old person who's raped and tortured, somehow manifested it, and somehow their soul, they even try and make an excuse for, needed to experience it to learn and to progress and to evolve. Because they defend it so strongly, because they're building their life on this belief. They're building all of their business and everything about their life on this belief. So, oh, I can't like, totally view it as false because then all of this you know faith that i put into it is just gonna the rug's gonna get pulled out from underneath because oh all these great things have happened when I, I i did this but they don't realize all these dark beliefs are coming in and they're looking at people differently they're looking at people who are oppressed and victims of evil they're looking at them differently because they view that everything they've done all the the blessings they have are because they changed their unconscious beliefs and they manifested it and people who have evil things done to them and have evil circumstances, it's their fault. It's very dark. It's very evil. It seems incredible on the outside. And don't get me wrong, there is a lot of truth to this. You know, the Bible even talks about, as a man thinketh, so is he. What we actually think about, what we actually feel and experience does influence our life. It does influence our habits, our lifestyle, and that becomes our character. And we want to build and focus on things that are just, pure, righteous, good. We want to do good works. We want to be good, righteous people. But we know that there are things that do happen to people and we need to protect the innocent. You know, like Jesus talked about, the little children. You know, those who harm those little children. You know, uh, what did he say? A millstone will be hung around their neck. Like there was serious punishment for the people who, who harm the innocent. And we need to protect the innocent. We need to protect the little children. You know, the souls who are victims of evil. And we need to be, if, if you are someone who has great influence and, and, you know, stature, that you do protect those who don't. You do protect the vulnerable. That's what it truly means to be a good person. 
Not to just say, oh, I automatically, and maybe in a past life or this time because I attracted it, I have this because I changed my mind and I reprogram my unconscious beliefs. That's where it gets dangerous. It's positive. It's good to focus on good things, to build good habits, to change the way you see life according to the truth, according to the word of God, according to what is true, not just some fluffy duffy like every everything's what you make it, everything's what you think, you know, your truth is my truth and you create your own reality. No, you don't manifest a reality. You're living in a reality and there is a truth and there is lies and you need to be discerning of the two. That's another area this law of attraction gets, you just attract anything in life so whatever you think about becomes. It's completely false. It's completely false. You don't just think about a Lambo and it arrives. You know, you can, you know, do some sacrifices and do some crazy stuff that people do to allow demons to help them achieve these things. Look at Satan. He literally promised Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, all the power, all the women, all the wealth, everything. And Jesus is like, no, I worship my God. I worship the Lord my God. You know, he cited scripture because Satan wanted that worship. And there are people who worship Satan and they do get power. They do get a lot of things. And there are demons that enter people when they make these pacts with demons and with the devil. There are actual spirits, and we're meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're meant to commune with the Holy Spirit. We're meant to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, not with any other demon, not with greed, not with any other motives, but pure motives for righteousness. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all shall be added unto you. So instead of trying to manifest your reality to whatever you make it and, and think that people who are in horrible circumstances is 100% because they manifested it and they attracted it and they're holding that in their unconscious, actually have a heart for those who are lost. Actually have a heart for those who are you know, afflicted by the devil, who are, who are in oppressed situations, who are victims of evil. Have a heart for them. Go you know, be a protector of them. Go be a blessing for them. Go help them. Go be generous to those who are less fortunate. Go actually have a heart for people because that's in the beginning you get into this stuff. Most people have a great heart for people, but they have this desire to change circumstances in their life. So they compromise. They believe this law of attraction and that they don't realize where their soul is being corrupted by Satan, where they are actually building a cold heart. That's all the devil wants to do is to corrupt you and turn you evil and to get you to become a sinner and someone who produces evil things instead of someone who produces righteousness, good works, and love. But if you follow Christ and you're, you're discerning in the word of God, you labor in doctrine, you abide in his word, that the truth sets you free from the grip of the evil one, and you truly can produce good works, fountains of living water flow out of you, and the Holy Spirit has a vessel to truly manifest his glory through and to touch souls, to be a loving force for people, and to embody and be molded in the image of Christ. So I hope this helped you guys understand the law of attraction. For anyone who's kind of believing this, who has friends in it, that you understand the extent to which it's true and then the line to which it's not true and is actually very evil and problematic. I hope I was able to discern that line for you, that you can be more aware of this and that it's a blessing for you like all my other videos. Please throw a like, a comment, subscribe. I've got more videos coming. Any video recommendations, submit them below. Have a great day. God bless you.